All right. Thank you very much. All right. As we get started, I have some handouts so that you will follow along and not fall asleep. So my question for you this afternoon is, are you ready for prime time? No, not Deion Sanders, if you are familiar with football. But prime time in the way of getting ready for networking. Networking sometimes has a negative connotation with people. But networking does not have to be this negative, this weird, this, oh my gosh, I have to do this kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be that way. So today, we probably won't take up the entire time, but I wanted to go over, like the worksheet says, a few myth busters and some rules on schmoozing with professionals. So that's what we can call it instead of this networking thing. So always I tell my students to define your terms first. So let's do that. What in the world are we talking about when we're talking about networking? Well, here's the Oxford Dictionary definition of this term networking. A group of people who exchange information and contacts and experience for professional and for social purposes. So you can network with people and it not have to be a professional thing. You network with people if you're in a book club, for instance. You're networking, you're sharing a book, you're sharing information with people. That's a social event. Some people will network for crafting. You know, there's, there's new things that are going around, these craft events. You get together and, you know, ladies drink their wine and they have their paintbrushes and they try some Pinterest project. Well, that's a social purpose. This afternoon at 3 o'clock, if you are able to stick around or come back to campus for this event, we are having more than 30 business professionals from the Bowling Green area come to the auditorium to not, you're not going to beg them for jobs, but you're going to meet them and try to figure out what it is they do for a living. Because one day you'll be expected to probably graduate, uh, get out in the real world, and be able to earn a living so that you can buy your own cereal and not have to use mom and dad's money for your own cereal. So what does this mean? What do we do? How do we do it? So in order to have a good professional image, in order to display your really good communication skills, you've got to be a good networker. So let's talk about that. We've got three myths. Now I have put some purple sheets of paper on a couple of tables. Does someone have number one on their purple sheet? Will you mind reading that for us? Just turn it over. What does it say? Networking is just asking someone for a job. Huh. Networking is just asking someone for a job. That is not correct. That is the biggest myth about this idea of networking. That all you're doing is just schmoozing someone so that you can get hired. Networking is about building relationships. It's not about asking someone for a job. You can do that in a job interview. You can do that in a more formal setting. What's going to happen at events like today is to figure out what career path is good for me. If you're thinking about accounting, go talk to one of the accountants that will be here. If you're thinking about, well, you know, I don't know if I like uh, marketing, or if I, I don't know if I want to do business administration, maybe I want to do some human resources. These professionals will be there to help you figure out if this is something that you want to pursue. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how do we do all of this by asking questions and developing our professional image. You also build networks with people here at the university. How many of you have gone to another extra credit event on campus with a guest speaker, someone in Van Meter, someone in, exactly. Do you ever take the opportunity to go and meet that person? I know personally three students. One of them got an internship with a New York City media company. Just from a guest speaker in a room just like this, after the presentation, she just went up to someone, you know, hey, I enjoyed that speech. Thank you for coming to Western. They had a little conversation. During the conversation, the gentleman says, yeah, you know, we always have interns 
available, internships available at our home company. She's like, oh, well, where's your home company? And he's oh, New York City. She's like, yeah, sign me up. She got to spend the summer in New York City. Now, extreme example, yes. But that was just one opportunity that this student did not let pass her by. She met someone and got an internship out of it. Now it was in communication, but I'm sure there's one in marketing. I'm sure there's one in accounting. I'm sure there's one in all of these different areas. So it's not just trying to get a job, but it's building these relationships. All right, who's got purple paper number two? If you will read that for me. Oh my goodness. You know, are you shy? Is it difficult for you to have a conversation with someone that yes, you want to hide yourself in a in a paper sack? No. It's not just for the extroverted, for the dynamic, for the really charismatic. It's even for those of us who really stink at conversations. I am not the best conversationalist. I know I'm a communication major. It's supposed to be my job, right? I get awkward. I like stand around and Yep, so, okay. It, sometimes I struggle with asking the right questions or what kind of small talk am I going to, to do with this person. So you have to practice it, though. As with anything else you do in life, whether it's public speaking for my students here in the front row, whether it's a sporting event for you guys in the back, whatever it is, you have to practice it, right? You're not going to get it right the first time. Conversation is the same way. So learning how to be a good conversationalist is not going to come naturally. So using an event like today, non-threatening, non-stressful, um, on your turf, this is your turf, it's your university. Use it to your advantage by having those good conversations and when you mess up, evaluate that and do better the next time that someone comes around. All right, who's got number three? Oh, blah, 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 me, 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 me. I know some of us are very good at talking about ourselves and tooting our own horn and talking about our own accomplishments, and some of us just aren't. Networking is not about always talking about yourself, especially at an event like today, when you know there's business professionals there, when you know that there's a purpose for this event, and the purpose is for you to ask questions of these people. What is it that you do? What's your company do? How can I get to where you are in a short amount of time? So it's not all about talking about yourself. So if you are one of those uncomfortable people talking about yourself all the time, networking is still for you. Now that we've busted some of these myths and we know how to be good schmoozers, let's go through some of the more positive rules. Rule number one, don't pass up any opportunity. Obviously, you guys are here. You haven't passed this opportunity up just yet. Go to all of these extra credit opportunities. If it's someone that you think you might learn something from, go into a situation with an open mind. Also, don't pass up opportunities to meet your professors, not just in class but meet them in their office. Find out what, how they can help you. Professors all across this university, they, they all didn't grow up here in Bowling Green. They all didn't go to school here at Western. They have networks themselves. They have contacts all across the country. So if you don't want to be here in Bowling Green, you know, I've got contacts from where I used to live in Cleveland, Ohio. I have contacts from where I used to live in Cincinnati, Ohio. So if you, don't, if you want to live somewhere up there, I might know somebody who could, who knows somebody, who knows someone who could get you uh, at least to talk to someone to get a job interview someday. But your professors are, are the first line of networking. Events like today, guest speakers, and professors. Never pass up those opportunities. You never know who's got that information that you will need to get an internship, a recommendation letter, um, they know about scholarships, whatever it may be. Number two, you need to know where you're going. 
have at least a little bit of a plan. Two really loud people, so let's close that out. Have a direction. I know as, as younger students, freshmen and sophomores, you might not have exactly where you want to go in life, exactly what you want to do, what company you want to work for, at your five-year plan, your seven-year plan, your 10-year plan, but maybe you have just an idea. I want to work in sports. I want to work in, I want to work with numbers. I want to work in social media. And you might not know exactly how to get there. A day like today is going to help you even further this direction, hone that direction a little bit. But you first have to know a little bit about yourself. And this is going to help you when we start a asking our questions or writing our questions out. Knowing what you want, knowing who you are, is going to help you develop these good questions, build relationships, get you a good job in the future. Number three, so you know a little bit about yourself, you have a plan, you've taken advantage of all these networking opportunities, so what do you do once you get there? Be yourself. Be honest if you're not really sure this is what you want. I just want to, to talk to someone in marketing to see if this is for me. And then you ask the questions, you build that relationship. All right, have a firm handshake. Part of having a positive, confident self-image is by having that really good handshake. And we're gonna practice that. So everyone's got this, so give me an L. No, we're not cheering for Louisville. But notice, everyone, you know, we've got our little webs here, right? A good handshake is going to go, I'm going to go web to web with my hand. My hand to her hand. I'm not going to do this little finger stuff. Hello. No fingerellas, no limp fishes. That's just awkward, it's unprofessional, and it doesn't give you confidence. So going in web to web, I'll oh, stop it. And, Good eye contact, a nice smile, more confident, and it's professional. So everyone take a minute, practice with someone near you. Austin, nice to meet you. Yes, let's not break hands. Nice to meet you, Haley. Nice to meet you. Excellent. You guys have excellent handshakes. Nice to meet you. Come back to the back row so you don't feel left out. Nice to meet you. So see, web to web, nice handshake, none of this little limpy stuff. Now, here's some other things to know about handshakes. And, you know, at the risk of, you know, telling on someone that is really high up at this university, there's someone here that kind of runs the place. He likes to come in and do this kind of thing. Have you ever shaken hands with Dr. Ranstall? So, yes. So you have to be careful. A person in authority, like the president of our university, obviously can come in and kind of you know, pat someone on the shoulder, give them an extra hug. But in your situation, you're not the person in authority here. The person in authority has the job that they're going to give you. So keeping your hand out straight, the other hand somewhere else, not on their shoulder, um, not on their, there's another one that's kind of a power move as well, if you grab their elbow, and another one, putting your hand on top of their, Dakota. See, again, that's, it's almost, that's motherly in that instance, where I'm like, you know. You know, I, I might do that if I were sympathizing or empathizing with you, but not, in a, not when we're trying to be, um, meeting each other in a networking situation or a job interview. So just the other hand down, just shake with the other hand. Nice, firm, don't you know, break someone's hand, and no limp fishes. Never, ever a limp fish. Today you'll have an opportunity at one of the sessions to make your own business cards. Now, I don't know if they're this fancy, but the reason that you want to have a business card 
uh, you can call it a contact card, a networking card, whatever semantics, whatever name you want to put with it, it's really important to have some contact information that you can leave someone at an event like today's, at the networking event. Or if a, a guest speaker has come to campus and you've met them and you give them your contact information. So keep it simple. Your name, maybe that you're a student here at Western, email address, phone number. It's really all you have to have. And that way they have something of yours that they can remember you by and if something comes up, if something happens, they could email you. Or when you email them, they're like, wait a minute, I think I met this person, oh yes. And they have your, your contact card or your business card in their files. Now, professional image on your business cards. Email addresses. We all have some really creative email addresses. But partygirl2013 at yahoo.com, probably not the one you want to put on your business card that you're going to give to your potential boss. I love beer at gmail.com. No. Keep your email as professional as your image needs to be for that industry. I know the one for Western is a little unwieldy. Your name, a couple of them, or three numbers at topper.wku. It's a long email address. I understand this. But there's nothing offensive about that email address. There's nothing that is off putting. It's very professional. So maybe you use your school email when you're trying to contact potential employers. If not, just a simple stacy.gish at gmail.com, it's going to fit the bill. If you have an unusual name like mine, you don't have to put numbers with it. But if your name is John Smith, okay, you might have to put some numbers with that one. But keep that email as professional as possible. Voicemail greetings. Now, again, we get creative with our voicemail greetings and we put song lyrics on there and all kinds of weird stuff. But when you're expecting a, a voicemail from a potential boss, keep that voicemail simple. Hello, this is Stacy Gish. I'm not at my phone right now. Please leave a message. I'll return your call as soon as I can. Very simple. Uh, my in-laws, they whistle to the Andy Griffith show on their cell phones. You know, oh, da, da, and, and not as professional. They're retired. They've got all the money they need, so they can do that. Don't do that until you've got all the money you need and you can retire. So, business cards. Dressing appropriately. Now, you see our cat with his lovely little plaid tie here. For an event like today, recruiters here on campus, unless you have set up that appointment prior, they know that you're not going to be dressed necessarily the most professional, except for our friend Austin here, who he dresses in that tie every class day. And, you know, it's, it makes him look like a confident, competent communicator. And I can say that because, you know, he's still in my class and I'm teaching him these things. But that says something about your image. So when you're thinking about meeting someone or approaching anyone, a professor or anyone, you might want to think about what, what you're wearing says about you. So ladies, you know, be careful with some of your clothing. I tell my students, my female students in class, you want to be careful with no boobs, no butts, no bellies. Let's keep it as conservative as possible. You, your skirts, you know, they should be lower than mid-thigh, almost to your knees. Yes, I know, you know, I'm a prude, but it's better than having them right up and you're tugging and you're trying to hide things that are showing. Keep it conservative. That's good image. And then on Friday night, when you go out to party, wear whatever you want to. But when you're thinking about getting a job, keep it simple and keep it conservative. So dress appropriately. Day like today, it's pretty warm in this classroom. You'll probably want to check about body odor. So <laughs> deodorant is always good. In a pinch, I've used hand sanitizer. Not ashamed to say that. Anything that is not going to help me be a really stinky person when I'm trying to meet someone new. So keep all of that in mind. You don't want to have lots of colognes or perfumes on either. That could be off-putting to someone who perhaps is allergic to something like that. 
Rule number seven. Even today, we're going to offer free food. You know, we talked about this free food thing is, is what students like. You're typically not there to eat, to get the free food. So, eat before you meet. Do your eating before you go networking. Have perhaps a mint to freshen your breath again. Have, go to the mirror to check your teeth so that you know, nothing's sticking out of your teeth. Again, professional image. Or, if you want to go ahead and do the greeting of everyone, shaking hands, collecting business cards, save your eating for after all of your networking ends. Because you know how awkward it gets. You know, you're trying to hold a cup, you're trying to hold a plate, you've got, you know, you're collecting business cards, you're shaking hands. It gets to be really unwieldy. So even if you're here or at an outside networking event, we, help, we host networking events at the Sloan Convention Center sometimes. They have tall tables. Set your items on a tall table, then go meet and greet, and then come back for your drink or for your snacks later. All right, questions. The best rule of thumb is to ask open-ended questions. What are open-ended questions? Open-ended questions are questions that don't end with a yes or no answer. So let's talk about some of these. So I'm providing you index cards, something that you could whip out today at the networking event. I think there's three in there. Now, I'll start you off with a question. Could be as simple as, you know, you introduce yourself, your firm handshake, your good eye contact. So, what is it that you do at this organization? There's number one. Now, you could be a little more creative. What does a person like you do in a typical work day? What's a typical work day like for you at this organization? So there's some tasks. So that's a good question to ask. It's very open-ended. And then you're going to hear, well, I do this, I do that. And then you can hear, oh, okay, I can do those things. I can learn those things. Now, you tell me, what are some questions that you would want to ask, perhaps? What are some good questions? Okay, yeah, that would be good just for that opening, you know, my name is, what company do you work for, where are you from, uh, maybe where they went to school, because again, we're on a college campus, so icebreakers in that manner. Yes, sir? There you go. Now you're thinking, what caused you to become interested in this profession? And they can give you a little bit of their background. You know, well, I was going to be a music major, and then I switched to business. And you can find out some really interesting things about people by asking a good question like that. Yes, sir? How did you get to this job? There you go. How did you get here? And so they can lead you on this path. And then you can see, wait a minute, okay, you know, you, if you've been out 10 years, you know, then they're the manager, and you're like, okay, I can be a manager in 10 years. And they can start telling you how they got there, so that you can visualize yourself getting there. Another good question. Anything else? One thing that you might want to consider asking, if you don't know this already, do you need an advanced degree for that particular job that that person has? Special certifications. For instance, accountants, you know, they need to take the CPA exam in a lot of cases in order to get different types of business. So find out if they need advanced degrees, special certifications, are there exams, is there professional development that they'll have to do every year. Some, some organizations are like that. Financial planning, for instance. Not only do you have to take a financial planning exam to be a certified financial planner, but you would probably need to do so many hours of professional development each year to continue with that certification. So that's an important question to ask. Um, 
Another thing to ask would be not just classes. I mean, I think you guys know what degree plan that each major takes. Are there other electives that this person would recommend you take? Because sometimes, you know, you have that degree plan, it's straightforward, but then if you took, you know, we were talking about foreign languages earlier, if you took a foreign language, would that help you? If you took a social marketing media class, would that help you in the future of this position? Try to figure out where, the, where this industry is headed. Is there something that people really might not be in the job, in that job right now, but if you're looking five or ten years from now, would someone like me be needed? I have these skills, I have those skills. Yes, sir? Like, uh, I'm kind of interested, uh, it isn't really appropriate to ask, uh, probably, uh, if a person already, is already doing the job, and is, uh, is kind of successful, uh, is it appropriate to ask uh, if he missed out any opportunities, uh, if he, I don't know, <clears throat> maybe he had job offers from abroad, you know, doing the same kind of job. Is it appropriate to ask this? Absolutely, of absolutely. Uh, many people enjoy talking about their, their path, their experiences, um, regrets, opportunities, yeah, mistakes that they've made. That would be an excellent question because you're just trying to figure out not to take that same mistake, not to follow that path, but you want a straighter path. I asked this question more from my culture. Sure, sure. Um, most people do like talking about themselves, and given the opportunity, yes. You know, from a cultural perspective, from a personal perspective, people a lot of times don't mind sharing that. And these professionals, if they don't want to share these types of things with you, they'll tell you. They're like, ah, oh, you know, maybe that's a little bit too much. Do you have another question for me? They'll be honest with you if you're honest with them, in most cases. What other questions can you think of? that you could put on your list. There may be some companies here that you have never heard of. If you're not from Bowling Green, you might not have heard of a specific company that is represented in the auditorium. It's perfectly appropriate at this stage, not at the job interview stage, but it's perfectly appropriate at this stage to ask them what they do, what they produce. Do they have other locations, for instance, if you're not interested in staying here in Bowling Green? If you're interested in Louisville or Nashville, do you have other locations? Do you have overseas locations? You, it's perfectly appropriate to ask about things like travel. How much do you travel? Are there a lot of late nights? Um, Work-life balance is pretty important to your generation. I understand this. And if you're not willing, that was one reason I got out of journalism was that it's late nights. You know, if I'm at a sporting event until 10 o'clock at night, how am I going to tuck my kids in the bed, right? So got out of sports journalism and did a little more PR th kinds of activities or marketing activities. My work-life balance was okay then. But, you know, if I'd really thought about that in college, like, yeah, I'm, I'm here at 10 o'clock at night in college, perfectly okay, but not when I have family. So those kinds of questions would be appropriate as well. Yes, sir. That's a good one, yeah. Because you want, you want to know if you're going to be passionate about this job too and get them talking about it. Yeah. Hopefully they do. If they <laughs> Exactly, you're like, okay, now why don't you like your job? You know, is it the job? Is it the company? It may, if they don't, maybe that's a good conversation starter to figure out, now wait a minute, if I'm thinking about this, is this going to bu bug me too? Because you want to be happy in this place that you're going to spend eight or nine or ten hours a day in. Yeah, don't want to scare you on that one. So questions. Before you go and talk to people, again, know yourself, be yourself, but also have a few ready. But also, don't pepper the person with all the questions like an interview. Be open to the conversation with follow-up questions with conversation. Make it a conversation, not, okay, question number three says, no, that's, that's not why we have the index cards, but it's just to make sure you have something available in case you're like me and you have that awkward moment and then you're like, what do I say next? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and then you remembered the question. 
Number nine. You know, I'm, I'm looking at a lot of different things. I'm remembering things from my job searches. And I'm getting down to nine and ten, and I'm kind of struggling with some of these. But one thing I remember from a networking event is, you know, no one wanted to talk to the person who wasn't exactly nicely dressed. You know, he had just come in from, I don't know where, it was some business trip that the person had, jeans, loafers, you know, kind of a pullover sweatshirt situation on, and you're like, what, you know, why would I want to talk to you? And people would ignore this person. Well, you know, okay, okay, I've met everyone here. I need some more extra credit. Okay, I'm going to meet one more person. So you go over and meet the guy with the jeans and the pullover who doesn't look like he would own half of Bowling Green. And by golly, the guy owns half of Bowling Green. Real estate guy. But he's not exactly dressed in the most professional wear. He you know, just came in here on a dime. He was like, I'm sorry, I'm late. I couldn't go home to change. I just got in from Boston or somewhere. I'm so glad you came over to meet me. No one else wanted to come talk to me today. And you're like, oh, really? Okay. And so if you're the only person that meets that guy who's not wearing the Armani suit, you never know who that person really is. So don't judge someone who's not dressed appropriately. Don't judge someone at the networking event because, well, okay, I'm never going to be an accountant. Never say never. You know, meet as many people as you can to develop those relationships for future reference. And then finally, kind of a lost art with us in our kind of fast-paced culture, we forget to express appreciation. If you meet someone here on campus at a networking event, a guest lecturer in your class, a guest speaker over in Van Meter, and you get a chance to meet them, thank you for your time. It's very simple to just say thank you. Now, to follow up on this, if, if you have really connected with someone at a networking event or an after uh, speaker kind of situation and they've offered you a little advice, you've talked a little bit longer than you know, two or three minutes, you know something about them, they know something about you, if you have their contact information, maybe you do send them a handwritten thank you note. Why would you do that? to help you be remembered by this person. If you really think you would like to get to know this person a little bit better, that they could somehow help you or you could help them and their company someday, and you have their contact information, you're like, hey, I really enjoyed talking about your company. I've never heard of a company like this. If you ever have an opportunity for internship, I would like to know about it. Thanks. Here's my email address one more time. And you would not believe the power of a thank you card. So express appreciation either right then at the event or do it right at the event, but maybe consider that one too. Because you never know if someone comes in later and they're like, oh yeah, wait a minute, I, I, the resume comes in and like, I've seen that before. Because I'm telling you, I save my thank you cards. Someone sends me a thank you card and it's, it's on my bulletin board because they're very few and far between these days. Any other questions for me about networking or professional image? Any more questions you can think of for your index cards? 